Hey, it's time for another Johnny Juke tabletop video. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. I can't stand intros. Hey, good day, everyone. I hope you're having a super fantastic day wherever you are. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Johnny. I'm an artist, I'm a musician, and I like sharp things. That's right, sometimes I even take them into the woods. Uh, today I'm going to show you the CRKT M16-14 Zulu Lima Echo Kilo. It's one of the knives that's in my collection. You've never seen it into the woods. The likelihood of me taking it into the woods are slim to none, which ties into another point. I'm not into the woods this weekend at all, having a little bit of a vehicle issue. So it's a little bit too cold to be cycling roughly 84 kilometers into the woods. I'm gonna wait for another day. So I thought I'm gonna use this time wisely. I'm gonna show you a knife out of my collection. Let me know if you want me to talk about this bad boy in the coming next little while. And I, I thought I'd throw this on the table just for a little bit of color. This is the mini case sod buster in an orange Delrin. Really, really sweet little knife. I've already done the blade centering. Thank you, Johnny. And I was thinking of putting a half stop on this as well. I've done it on the larger sod buster. Let me know if that's something you want to see. Mind you, I've already got a video on how to do that, but what a sweet little knife. This is the type of knife I would like to take into the woods very soon. But let's close him up. We're not going to talk about him too much today. And what else are we going to talk about? Little Jerry, you got anything to say? <coughs> he usually says the same things, but little Jerry and the boss, he's overlooking everything. Okay, so here we are with the CRKT. I call it the Zlek, but uh, it probably goes by several names. It's an interesting knife. A lot of people are not a big fan of this um, auto locks thing, but I'll be honest with you on this knife, I don't have a lot of knives like this, so on this one I don't mind. Let me close it up first, and if, if it's something you're interested in, I will tell you it is a little bit heavy. This is the larger version. Mm, let's do the old, uh, really dirty. I've got a lot of uh, contact cement on everything these days. Uh, we're coming in totally, and I'm going to include the glass breaker. We're coming in at, a, at exactly just a big one, two, three, eight. So five and, I don't know, what is that, you know, seven sixteenths? Making me work here. And an overall, oh, about 142 millimeters. Let's go with the width on this. About 32 millimeters at the widest point. If you include this little device at the top, it's probably about 45. The pocket clip, you got four points of carry here. Tip up, tip down, right, left. And what else? Let's go with the overall thickness on this one too. I would say it's probably about 15 millimeters. Probably puts us at about uh, just bigger than a half inch. Yeah, so what is that? do the math again. That's two, four, six, eight, about nine sixteenths. Making me do the math today. Let's put this stupid ruler away. Uh, there's the blade centering if you if it matters to you. It's almost perfect. It's leaning just a little bit to the clip side. Very pointy glass breaker, which I really like. And I like the way this carries. This has a, like a seat belt cutter, which kind of looks like a duck. You know, he's in a boat and he's kind of, he's rowing the boat and he's, he's in a really happy mood, right? But then he gets aggressive and now he's like in front of the boat and the boat's ready to attack. That's just weird. But that's what I see. I should paint a little, a little eyeball there. Do you not see that? He's like in a boat. Anyway. Here's how this little locks things works. It's on a spring. 
And by the way, when it's engaged, if you're coming onto this type of video for the first time, it will not allow you to close this liner lock. It's actually a pretty stout liner lock, by the way. So you can't close it. Now, there are probably videos out there on hard use and all kinds of crazy stuff where people actually try to break that lock, but for what I use it for, it's perfectly fine to disengage the lock. You just got to pull the lever back and off you go. Now, I don't find that to be a big problem. As a matter of fact, I kind of find it to be a little bit fidgety, especially when I'm not on a camera. Uh, lefty love. No problem. I would say that the um, there is no spring on this. Sorry, I'm kind of talking and doing this at the same time. There is no spring, but it really does come flying out quite nice. It's really like a... I keep seeing that duck now. I don't know if you guys are seeing this duck everywhere. Anyway, I've got bad memories with ducks. It's a soft, a soft switch, I think they call it. So you're kind of just pulling back rather than a hard switch. I don't know if that's what it's called when you're pushing downward. But I find that just pulling it straight back, just gently, and it's got a good detent, it just comes flying out. So that's very effortless. Um, I do believe the blade steel is 8CR, but don't quote me on that. Let's bring it in a little bit closer. Now, there's no markings on the blade type on this knife. I think it's 8CR 13 MOP. You can always correct me. It's got that Tonto, which I really do like, and some serrations, which I don't mind. I think on this type of knife, it's not really a bad thing. And the duck slash seat belt cutter is a good forward type finger guard. So that's actually a very good thing too. And just kind of put you back on the butt end here. I, I kind of would have liked to seen this just a little bit more pronounced. You know, it's not bad. It's really good. But if it was just a little bit more, it probably would be locked in even better. And like I said, there's a tip down, uh, tip down right, tip down left, and then tip up left, right. It's kind of like a, um, I want to say plastic. I can't remember the name of it now. There is a name. I want to say Zytel, maybe. I could be wrong on that too. This one doesn't get a lot of love. It's in the collection, but I got to tell you, I'm glad it's in the collection. Uh, long ago, I had the smaller version, which I think is the 12 Zulu Lima, Zulu Lima Echo Kilo, or the Zlek. And um, I kind of like this one. I've had an M16, a little bigger version, or not a bigger version, the M16 without this safety stuff. I think it was like a classic or something. That might have showed up in a long, long video, long deleted, I'm thinking. So I think that's what we've got. The pocket clip, I don't mind. I've had to do no modifications to the pocket clip and I actually like, in this particular knife, I do like it coming up because it's, as soon as it comes out of your pocket, it's basically ready to go. In some knives, I find when it's like this, you have to kind of, you got to reach for it. You know what I mean? You got to move around. But I think in this particular knife, and same with like the paramilitary, or sorry, the military. I like that in the military, it's the same. So what else can we talk about? We've got, um, these are actual blade stops. They're logging, lodging right into the frame of the knife. And that's what's keeping the blade from going any further. So, but I think you can also use them as, maybe, maybe, I just haven't used it in a while, as you can use them as um, thumb studs. But I find it to be kind of awkward. Be honest with you, that duck looks like he wants to come down on my finger. This side, a little easier, but what else can we talk about? We got the blade steel, we've got this good coating. The coating is very strong. You can see I've had 
some uh, cutting duties with it. It's not just in the collection. And on days where I'm, you know, working around the vehicle, especially when I'm opening packages or cutting rubber tubes or whatever it might be, I always have something like this nearby. Um, what else? Does it open any other way? No, that's good, strong detent. So, yeah. Okay, stop that. Anyhow, I don't know what else to talk about. If you collect um, CRKTs, I think this is one that probably should be in the collection, I'm thinking, or if you're a paramedic, perhaps. If I was a paramedic, I would definitely have this uh, with me. And I think that's about it. I think it's about all I really want to say. Thank you to all of you. We just creeped over the 3000 uh, plateau and we're moving forward into the woods coming up very, very soon. And uh, again, what, let me know if you want me to talk about this, just so you know, my elevation is, that's um, in meters, by the way. And uh, the barometer is definitely going down, so it's not a good day. And if you're wondering, the temperature of the room is 21 degrees Celsius. And by the way, every room that you're in, doesn't matter where, is always room temperature. Ha ha ha. Okay, guys. Bye for now. We'll talk to you soon.